Welcome to Picture Manager 2010 Overview. I'm Trainer Laurie. What's Picture Manager? Well, it's part of the Windows Microsoft Office program, and it allows you to both view and edit your photos. So you can save them as various file types, you can ch change the compression, uh, get rid of that red eye removal. And it works great in conjunction with PowerPoint 2010, which we cover in another class. There's a couple of ways to open Picture Manager. The easiest probably is to open a picture, right click on it, and so select Open With, and it's called Microsoft Office 2010. <clears throat> Note that this is not Paint nor Picture Viewer, so don't click those. It is called Microsoft Office 2010. It doesn't mention uh, Picture Manager on it, but that's exactly what it is. Another option is to click on the Start menu and then go to All Programs, Microsoft Office, and drill your way down to Microsoft Office Picture Manager. And here it does say Picture Manager. When you open it up, you'll see you have lots of options. Uh, on the left, if you want to create shortcuts to find pictures, and on the right, you'll want to turn on the Edit Pictures pane. And this is where you can change all of the, the um, options for changing your picture. The first one is autocorrect. You might as well try it. If it doesn't work right, then you can always Control Z to undo it. But look at uh, how Kenny's picture turned before and after. And what it does is it, it corrects for color and brightness all in one button. So it's pretty pretty slick if it's right, if it uh, works to improve your picture. If it doesn't, again, just Control Z to undo. You'll also find autocorrect right on the toolbar. So you don't even have to go into the Edit Pictures pane. You can also, if you choose that uh, maybe the auto-correct wasn't exactly right, you can go in and do it by hand uh, separately. So if you choose brightness and contrast, you can, uh, here I made it a little brighter, you can see, but it looks a little dull. In other words, it, there's not a lot of contrast between the darks and the lights. So I increase the contrast and it improved the picture dramatically. So you can also vary it based on um, mid-tone. Just touches the midtones and not the highlights or the lowlights. The next one is color, and with color you can enhance your color automatically. You have an auto option, uh, and what it's going to do is uh, going to enhance it based on the um, ambient light. In other words, what color is your uh, the lighting source? Is it fluorescence? Is it uh, outdoor sunlight? And it's going to um, make it probably better. But again, if you want to do it yourself, you can. For example, the first one here is hue and saturation. And hue is the amount of uh, the first one. It says amount, and that's the amount of colors that are available. So the more colors that are available, of course, uh, the more de definition you're going to have. Hue are uh, which colors are available. And saturation is the intensity of the colors chosen. You can desaturate by simply clicking and dragging this down so it's not quite so bright. And same with hue, if you want to give it more of a, a rosy tint or a green tint, you can go through hue here. Again, that is a, a nature of the lighting source that you have. If your uh, fluorescents, for example, have a bit of a green cast to them, you might want to move it toward the pink side so that it, um, it uh, balances out. Crop works just the same way as in all the Microsoft Office programs. Uh, you click the handle and drag it in or out. Um, if you drag it in, it will make the picture smaller. And so that there's, there's more of Kenny in the picture. You may have noticed when I cropped, I tried to make his head or eyes follow the rule of thirds. And it's important to know the rule of thirds. That's like putting a tic-tac-toe screen over your picture and at any of the intersections is, or certainly on the lines, is where you'd want to put the most important element. And in this case that would be Kenny's eyes. How many times have you brought in a picture from your camera and it looked like this? Well fortunately this um, rotate is right on the on the toolbar. However, if you want some other options, under Edit Pictures, you'll see the Rotate and Flip. And in this case, I wanted to uh, make it look a little more casual uh, by uh, rotating it 10 degrees. Another option is to flop it or flip horizontal. Now, this is not a problem with this picture because, as you can see, there's no text in the picture. However, if somebody's wearing a shirt that has a word on it or there's text in the background, it's really obvious when you flip it horizontal, so be careful with that one. 
red eye removal is very important if you use a uh, flash. And sometimes your flash will make the eyes red like this. Uh, you simply click red eye removal and your cursor turns into these targets. Say I've already done my eyes uh, here. And then down here, you can see I'm just about to do Elizabeth's eyes. And as soon as you're uh, finished clicking all the targets, click OK, and all the red eye disappears. Sometimes if it's really red, you might have to do it two or three times for it to catch all the pixels. But essentially what it does is it turns the red pixels into gray, various shades of gray. Resize is very handy if you need to make a picture a certain height. For example, for uh, a web or for um, for example, I'm doing photos so that they will fit into Outlook, and they have to be at 96 by 96. But uh, I want to start with 200 by 200 and then let the uh, tool in Outlook make it uh, 96 by 96. So it's a, a good idea to use the uh, resize to make the image smaller. But it also makes the file smaller, too. And when that happens, that means it's going to throw away pixels. So it will make it much smaller. So you can see the original size was here, and the new size is here. So it's going to be a much smaller file. Uh, you can have uh, multiple ones that are already built in. For example, if you want for email or uh, for the web. Or you can create your own custom X height. When you compress pictures, it also makes them smaller. Uh, not necessarily physically smaller, but it will certainly make them take up less room in your, um, in your uh, data storage. So, for example, this is a picture that isn't compressed, and you can see it is 1.73 megabytes. It's a big file. And then it gets smaller for documents, smaller for web pages, smaller for email messages, and now you can see the compression is much smaller. But when I hit the final one and make it make it so that I can see it, you can see this is at 300. I zoomed out to 300, and you can see that the quality isn't there anymore. And that's what happens when you compress. You're pulling out pixels, all those pixels that make a nice refined image. So you only do this uh, with a copy. If you think you're going to use the original the way it is, if you want to use it for print and for the web, for example, make sure you save two versions of it. Zoom is very useful. Like I just said, I made that very small picture much bigger by zooming up to 300%. And you know, there's two ways to zoom, up here on the toolbar, if you like, or you can use the, I like this, because you just click and drag it till it's the right size. You don't have to try to guess. So it makes it bigger. You also have other options for viewing the picture. For example, this is view single picture, and that's certainly what you would work on while you're working on one picture at a time. You also have the thumbnail option, so if you want to pick just the picture that you want to work on, instead of trying to remember the name of it. And then the film strip is nice because it does show you a large version up here, and then it shows you what's coming up down below. One of the best things about this uh, tool is that we can save as various different files. So uh, it's a good idea to find out what file st uh, uh, format you need. Uh, for example, for a web page, if your webmaster says you need a, a JPEG, JPEG, or a PNG, uh, you will be able to make it exactly what you want. You can also email the picture right away. I, uh, there's an email option right up here on the toolbar, and it will ask, do you want to attach the message, the photo, as an attachment, or would you like it to be previewed? Or you can have it do both. So th it's a nice option. If you just want them to see it, but you don't need them to manipulate it, just display it in the message. But if you do need them to manipulate it for some reason, then you'd want to attach it. There's some other menu I options. Uh, for example, under File, you can see there's places where you can save and can choose what to do. Uh, under Edit, you can rename a picture if you need to. Under View, uh, you can choose how you're going to view, and we saw a lot of those already. Under Picture, we saw all of those under that uh, picture tool that we saw on the toolbar already. And then to under Tools File Types, this is uh, what would you like to uh, open with Picture Manager. So uh, it, you can say, I want all of my picture styles to be opened with Picture Manager. So whenever you open a new picture, it will automatically open up Picture Manager. That's all for this time. See you next time.